today, Zs. All right, guys. Welcome back to another Sunday edition of our weekly wellness, talking about our dinners for the week, because we all know after a long day of work, working for a job, working for yourself, working as a mom, um, and all of the errands and things that you're going to be doing, it is hard to cook something at six o'clock at night. Uh, So we're gonna be talking about our weekly dinners, And then we're also going to be talking about our weekly fitness routine just to kind of get ideas from each other and see what y'all are doing. And maybe someone says, I swear by working out during my lunch hour. And someone's like, man, I haven't really thought about that. I I can only work out at night. Um, It's just kind of a way to give each other ideas and inspiration. And then the third thing we're going to be talking about today is um, the Enneagram based wellness. So if you guys tuned in last week, I explained that I'm part of this um, writing challenge and we're writing a an essay, it's called an atomic essay, from 250 to 300 words every day. But y'all, I've been writing like 340 to like 420. I don't know how to reduce the words in my writing. So uh, all of them are collectively, or my articles that I'm writing are up on typeshare.co slash Katie Hardy. But I'm putting them on Facebook here. I'm putting them on Instagram here. I'm putting them on my website, wholehearty.com, um, just so, I mean, everybody consumes different things in different ways. I've been more active on Twitter lately at Wholehearty because um, this program is called Shift 30 for 30. Um, we are all primarily a community there. So anyways, all the things, wherever you want to read, wherever you gonna want to watch YouTube um, or listen to on the podcast, I'm going to hit you everywhere you are. (laughs) Okay. So let's go. So for meal plans, again, I like sharing my dinners for the week. um, And I want you guys to comment here as well and let me know what you guys are going to be having for dinner too. Instagram live, it's pretty easy to see the comments coming in. Facebook live, people will tell me that they commented, but I don't see it. I don't really know what the deal is with the Instagram comments or the the Facebook comments. Um, But even if you're watching this later and not live, just put it in the comments and let me know what you're cooking up for dinner this week. So for us, today's Sunday and I asked the boys, I was like, what do we want for dinner tonight? (laughs) And wasn't really getting anything. There was no automatic response. So just threw out spaghetti and meatballs. They really love spaghetti and meatballs. They really freaking love spaghetti and meatballs, which is wonderful because it's so easy. And they were like, yeah, spaghetti and meatballs. So we're doing that tonight. Um, Two, three options for meatballs. Um, Easiest is to uh, buy pre-made meatballs and put them, I used to like simmer them in a little bit of water on a pan um, in a pan on the stove. Andy loves to put them in the oven and I never would have ever thought to put pre-made meatballs in the oven. I will like, if I'm making my own meatballs, I put them in the oven, but, um, the pre-made ones, I don't know, never crossed my mind. So that's super easy. Pre-made frozen meatballs and put them in the oven. Um, the other way is obviously make your own meatballs. So you get the meat, onions, you know, maybe some oregano, basil, garlic, if you want to put an egg in there, maybe some breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, kind of flavor it up a bit. And then you can um, put those in like mini muffin tins and then put those in the oven. Or you can roll them up and put them on parchment paper on a sheet pan, put those in the oven. Um, but here's the deal. I, when I would make my own meatballs, I used to like form each one in like a perfectly round golf ball, but the boys like their meatballs already broken up whenever we make pasta or spaghetti. So I was like, why am I like making these perfect balls, but then I'm chopping them all up. No, no. Now I saute either the beef or the ground turkey, whatever we're going to be eating, and I'd saute it like it's going to go in a taco. And so I make their spaghetti or their pasta, and then I make this ground meat on the side, and then I mix it all together. And it's like meatballs, but it's, all, it's basically like taco meat, right? But instead of taco seasoning, it's more like Italian seasoning. Um, or no seasoning at all, because I've learned too with kids, those of y'all with kids out there, it's almost like the less flavor, (laughs) the better. If they taste too much of something like garlic or, oh, you know what the boys don't like is um, like teriyaki soy sauce. They don't like those flavors. The blander, the better. So that is tonight. 
That is meatballs, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Um, tomorrow is Monday. We, if you saw on the gram, Andy seared and grilled some pork tenderloin from Costco last night. I typically don't make it that way. I sear it on the stove and put it in the oven. Um, but it was a nice Saturday, and this is the second time he's done it. So he grilled a pork tenderloin. Naturally, it's from Costco. We have leftovers. So we are doing pork tenderloin leftovers on Monday. I chopped up some mushrooms and asparagus last night. I put them all together on, in a pan with some butter, some olive oil. I actually had some leftover uh, truffle olive oil that I had to buy for um, when I was doing like stuff with Jewel, when I was uh, uh, promoting some foods that were inside Jewel. I still had that leftover. It's probably a year old. I'm still alive today, so we're fine. But I mixed together asparagus and mushrooms and I gave the boys a little bit of each. Listen to what happened. Mac decided he didn't like mushrooms anymore. I was so proud of being in a family where all four of us, including two children, liked mushrooms. It was like a proud mom moment. Mac crushed it because he said he doesn't like mushrooms anymore. Bo was like, oh, I'll eat your mushrooms. Oh, but then wait, there's more. Bo didn't want the asparagus. Mac's like, oh, I like asparagus. So this worked out, ladies and gentlemen. I sauteed together asparagus and mushrooms and they each liked it separately so this is going to be a new thing however we have learned you can't overdo a good thing or else they get over it like lunch meat when we had a sitter this summer i was just like just give them like you know turkey or ham each day um or like peanut butter and jelly just like alternate between the two they now don't like lunch meat anymore <laughs> i think it's because i was lazy saying here are your two options for lunch when i should have thought of more so anyways we just never know i mean peanut butter and jelly they go back and forth all the time it used to be mac liked it and Bo hated it now Bo loves peanut butter and jelly and mac hates it i can't keep up it's different every day all right that is uh sunday and monday tuesday i have not made a home paid homemade chicken pot pie in forever. I literally don't know the last time I ever made it. You guys have probably maybe seen it before. I should probably put it up on the blog, the recipe. It's my mom's recipe in the, here's the secret. It's not a recipe. It's basically just find leftover vegetables or frozen vegetables and you use, oh, this is the healthiest part. You use a can, canned cream of mushroom soup. Oh yeah, just from the can. This is what we're doing. So anyways, you mix that all together, put it in the oven and it's freaking fantastic. Um, so we're gonna do that on Tuesday. And I should let you know too, um, for dinners, if I'm making something heavier, carbier, cause I am carb sensitive. We're gonna talk about that in the upcoming weeks. What the heck is carb sensitive? Some people, carbs don't really affect them. They don't get bloated from it. They don't get puffy from it. They don't get tired from it. Others of us do, and we won't have cel we don't have celiac disease, or we're not like gluten sensitive. But when we have carbohydrates, it really takes a toll on our skin. Again, all of the puffiness, all of the bloatedness, it's the worst. So because I've learned that about myself in my old age, I when we're having like a floury or a starchy dinner or meal, I don't make that starch the main character, right? I put this in a post last night. It's like the supporting actress's coworker. So I will make the main meal, the vegetable with some protein and some fat. And instead of denying myself the flour, whatever the starch is, I have a little bit of it. So that's what I will be doing with both the spaghetti and meatballs tonight and the chicken pot pie um, on Tuesday. Um, I want to be able to still eat it, but I know that for myself, I don't want to be puffy later that night or the next day. Um, so that is pot pie. Then Wednesday, I f was like looking at the schedule and I was thinking we needed, we haven't had ground turkey in a while. So, oh, because tonight we are doing the frozen meatballs. I have frozen meatballs that need to be gone uh, from Costco. Not that we don't like them, I'm gonna buy them again, but they, they've just been in the freezer for so long. So tonight we're doing frozen meatballs. Um, so but we're doing turkey stroganoff Wednesday. The boys love it. You basically, you know, same similar thing, sauteing the turkey. Um, and then I'll make like egg noodles for them. See, this is the thing about living with boys. Uh, right? Husband and two boys. And so they will definitely get more of the starches 
and I will not center starches around the meals, but they don't um, worry about things like that. So again, I will have the, um, the ground turkey and either make some um, like gluten-free noodles on the side or I'll have a little bit of theirs, but I, I basically just see what other vegetables and maybe like cheese or olives that we have going on and I will have that as my main character and instead of all the noodles, right, with the turkey. So this is kind of how I find balance. All right, Thursday, I'll be downtown. So Andy's on his own. And whenever he's on his own, he makes hot dogs. So the boys are getting hot dogs on Thursday, which is ironic because Friday, oh wait, no, Thursday they might do burgers. Um, because we have a friend staying with us who's in town Thursday night, and so he might grill out burgers with this buddy of his. So that is Thursday. So Friday, Saturday, TBD. It hasn't been decided. Typically Friday we might like grill out here at home, and Saturday we'll go out to dinner. Um, but TBD this weekend is kind of up in the air. So that is the week. Um, if it would be helpful for me, I have this in my. Did I, did I talk about Notion last week? Notion is my new best friend. It is a notes app and it's so much more organized and structured than the notes app on your phone. The notes app on my phone, I just have to like search for words um, and see what note comes up. But with Notion, it's very organized. So if you're watching this, whether live or uh, afterwards, let me know if it would, let me know in the comments if it would help if I would just put a screenshot of the dinners for the week. The reason why I talk about dinners for the week is because breakfast and lunch, I'm on the fly. Breakfast, I primarily don't eat. And if I do, maybe I'll do, there's this brand of yogurt called Too Good, T-W-O. Funny story, because I had it on the grocery list once when Andy was going grocery shopping and I put Too Good yogurt. And so he bought two yogurts and that was just a random brand. And I was like, oh, rats. You know, I really wanted this keto. It's a keto yogurt because it only has like three net carbs in it. I was like, ugh, I really wanted my favorite yogurt. And he's like, you put two good yogurts. <laughs> I was like, I need to tell too good the story. Um, anywho, and then, yeah, typically no breakfast. And then, um, like, the intermittent fasting thing, I try to, like, play with eating windows, which we can talk about at some point if you guys are interested. Um, and then lunches are always, like, a salad or leftovers or a smoothie. Um, so I just try to make it so I don't have to think too much. Boom. Okay, so that is meals for the week. Let's talk about a uh, fitness plan for the week, and then we'll get into the Enneagram-based wellness. So fitness plan for the week. Um, this past week, this, I, I just gave Notion a lot of credit, and now I'm not perfect in Notion because I can't find my fitness list from last week which had this week on top and last week underneath it, I must have put it in some random list, right? Okay, but basically last week, um, oh, I can probably search though, sure can. Yep, quick find, let's do that. So um, last week, if you guys remember, yo go, I um, found ya. I alternated running strength yoga, running strength yoga. Worked great, loved it. I took a, a rest day yesterday on Saturday. Um, primarily because I believe in at least one rest day a week and I'm doing this writing challenge. So I spent a lot of time yesterday morning. Um, okay. So here's what I'm thinking for this week ahead. Y'all ready? Today is Sunday. I worked out this morning. I did strength. So I basically like to mix up strength, running, and yoga. And depending on the week, I like to throw one or two hits in there. And if one of the hits was mo more mo cardio -y than the other, then I will do a hit, or sorry, a strength after, because the hit might not have as much strength. And then if I do a hit that has more strength than cardio, then I might run the next day so that I can get the cardio. So it's called balance. There's a method to my madness, um, but I don't like to stick to a strict every Monday. We wear pink. So today was strength. 
Um, right now, I have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to run. I mentioned to you guys yesterday or last week that when Andy goes downtown, I tend to not run. Um, when he works from home, I like to run because then I don't have to be home by the time he leaves in the morning to catch his early train. Um, but I will be actually doing that this week. Uh, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday run, Tuesday yoga. Thursday, I'm going downtown, so I, I'm going to put that as a rest day. Um, and then Saturday, I may or may not rest. We'll see. And then Sunday strength. So I like to mix it up. I um, uh, It's kind of like intuitive exercise, but I still like to have a structure to it. In regarding the timing of exercise, I am a wake up and workout kind of gal because if I say that I'm going to do it during the lunch hour, I will inevitably choose to spend more time on a work project instead. And if I say that I'm going to do it at five, I end up wanting to, you know, make sure I'm cooking dinner for the kids. They've got sports, yada. So I am like a whatever. I don't set an alarm clock because Andy's a sensitive sleeper and I don't want to ruin his slumber. But I will wake up anywhere between like 5.45 and 6.15 naturally. I get up and I do the damn thing. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about Enneagram-based wellness. This is my new jam. I'm obsessed with wellness. I'm obsessed with the Enneagram. So why don't we combine them together and make it a thing? Because here's what I believe. You can have somebody give you a magical golden unicorn of a diet and fitness plan. You might say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And so I might say, okay, Crystal, here is everything you need. This is what you need to eat. This is how you need to move. Boom. Let's say maybe you do a couple weeks and then you're just kind of over it. It's not what you want to do. It's not the type of foods that you like. It's not the type of workouts that you like. You don't want to wake up first thing and work out in the morning. You are a night owl, right? So something gets in the way. And and it's been about four years now that I've been working with women on wellness. I got my wellness certification from Duke back in 2018. And I've worked with dozens and dozens of women. And I understand the female mind. I do because I live it myself every single day. So I believe that it's not some gold-plated diet and fitness program that you need to follow. This is if you realize that you can't stick to those made for the masses programs, you need to understand why. Why do you stop? A and B, why did you want to do it in the first place, right? So that is connected to the Enneagram, understanding the motivations behind your behaviors. So I'm going to take a step-by-step -step process with this. Again, for the 30-day writing challenge that I'm doing, I'm not going to write about the Enneagram every single day, but I'm going to gradually introduce it to folks. So yesterday, and again, I'm posting about it here on Facebook, Instagram, typeshare.co slash Katie Hardy is where I'm actually like writing and hosting things. And then I'm going to be putting them on wholehearty.com as well. But y'all, you got to understand, I cannot do this all in like 10 minutes. So whenever I get to it, I will. But today's, is, uh, yesterday's and today's is posted on wholehearty.com. So I'm going to quickly go through, in case you're not familiar with the Enneagram, I'm going to quickly go through each type. And um, what I did was instead of just saying, this is the description of this Enneagram type, I gave a statement of um, how to connect that to your health. So how this, the name of the article is the nine personality types of the Enneagram and how we each can make or break your health. I want you to be able to understand your inherent personality and how it's impacting how you show up for your health. Cool? Okay, so, bop, 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 bop. Oh, and I say this at the end of the article, but if you are still like, what the heck is the Enneagram? And what, if you're like, I just don't know my number, people have responded on Twitter. They're like, I feel like I could be three of those things. I get it. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to give several resources to help you better understand your number. Okay, so number one, the perfectionist, also called the reformer. Your persistent judgment of yourself makes it hard to continue programs if you are not sticking to these programs to a T. So sometimes if you feel like, okay, I said I'm going to do this every morning, I'm going to eat this every night, and you don't stick to it, 
you're very hard on yourself, but it's hard also for you to continue the program and like dust yourself off and try again, right? What happens with the one is they can be so self-critical that they might be like, oh, like I can't do this. I can't do this right now. Um, and it might just, you might throw the towel in completely rather than saying baby steps, all right? And again, we'll, throughout the next month, I'll go in deeper on each uh, number, but I'm just giving these quick overviews real quick because I gotta go get back to my family. All right, number two is the helper. Putting others' priorities before yours because of your desire to be loved puts your health on the back burner. So it's not necessarily, oh, I just love to help people. I'm a helper and I'm going to sacrifice my needs for others. It's also this innate desire to be loved. And you might feel anxiety because you feel that you're not giving enough to others. So you are not making time to exercise, right? Or maybe you're cooking meals that they're most happy with, but you might not be happy with. That's a two. Number three, the achiever, me. Let me tell you, I wanted to be a seven. We're going to get to the seven called the enthusiast. I'm like, I was voted most enthusiastic. I am the enthusiast. Nah. I read the three chapter of the book and I was like, cringe. (laughs) So my friend, actually on the Inside Out Wellness podcast, if you go back, I forget what numbered episodes those are, but if you go back and see, we have three episodes on, hey, Baba three episodes on the Enneagram um, with my friend Erica, who is an Enneagram expert. And I don't even, sorry, when I get mentally interrupted, I have to like get back on track. (laughs) But, um, oh, I think I was telling her that I wanted to be a seven and it turned out that, oh, this is what it is. She's like, it should make you feel ugly. Like it should make, like whatever number you figure out should make you feel like gross. And I was like, yeah, that's the three. And what's interesting is that I had heard two other people who are threes want to be sevens, think they were sevens, and then it turned out they were three. Long story longer. The achiever, also known as a performer, you want to be the fittest, but tend to cut corners so you can fit in all of your other goals, right? So achievers want to win and they like to really be on top of everything. (laughs) And so instead of like going all in on one thing, they might want to win at everything. And because of that, instead of really going all in on their wellness, they might say, well, I'm going to give like 70% to this or like maybe 10% to 10 different things. Um, And I can definitely relate to that. All right, number four, the individualist, also called the romantic. Um, You want to do things your way and you don't want to conform to society's definitions of health. So that can backfire because instead of thinking of health as something that you need to live and survive and for longevity, you might think of it more as like pressure to be healthy. Um, So think about that. And I would love to hear too, again, whether you're watching live or whether you are watching the replay, tell me in the comments what you are or like if you definitely know what number you are let me know and if you feel that these like health-based descriptions resonate with you and then two if you don't know what you are yet let me know if any of these resonate and if you think oh wait maybe i am that okay so you know what i just realized so with instagram i'll have to listen to i'm gonna listen back to this live because I feel like the microphone on our phones is at the bottom and I have it propped up on books. I should find my um, freaking tripod, but I just have it propped up on books. So I'm hoping Instagram can hear, but if not, you'll hear it on the podcast or go to um, YouTube or Facebook. So side note. All right. Uh, Number five, the investigator. No amount of research is enough for you before starting a health program. And so, oh yes. So they really want a lot of data. They want a lot of information. They also have a finite amount of energy, meaning that they can't just like go all in in the morning and get their workout in and then go, you know, hog wild into work and then grocery shopping, they really need to piece their energy out throughout the day. Number six, the skeptic, also known as the loyalist. This is my husband. It can take weeks for you to select a health method, but once you find the one, you are locked in. It takes Andy like two weeks to order um, like snow goggles on Amazon because he needs to make sure it's the right thing. And then somebody on Twitter commented today too that said yes and 
The reason that they can be skeptic about choosing a health program is that they will then worry if they chose the wrong one and think I'm stuck. And I, oh my gosh, I can so see Andy like that so much that his biggest worry when making decisions is making the wrong decision and being stuck with the decision that he made. I like live this in my life with him every day. But they're so freaking loyal, the sixes. That's my favorite thing. All right. Number seven, the enthusiast. You're the fun one. But be careful not to use adventure as an escape from your health goals. So if you are all about the next adventure, going somewhere, doing something fun, ordering something fun, let's just have fun, that might put a damper on any sort of like eating method you're testing or any sort of fitness routine that you were trying to get into. Number eight, the challenger. You are motivated by the need to feel strong, but don't let that make you think you have to live like a caveman. I think sometimes, you know, both for men and women, if they're an eight, they might feel this pressure to really, you know, go all in with like CrossFit and like paleo. Um, but even though your personality might be strong, you can still do softer things. Okay. So try some yoga, try some Pilates. All right. And then finally, number nine, do you want to come say hi, Mac? Mackie, Mackie's here. Uh, Andy and Bo went to, uh, tryouts. You can go there or you can go here. Uh, some basketball tryouts. Okay. Number nine, peacemaker. You'd rather avoid conflict than cooking what you want. But respectfully speaking up for yourself and getting away for a long run is a healthy recipe for you. So the peacemakers want to avoid conflict at all costs. Um, Another thing about the nines, the peacemakers, and this is another woman commented in my writing group said that it's really hard for her to organize her thoughts so like go like creating this um, fitness plan for the week or deciding meals or dinners for the week is very hard for nines to do it's hard for them to they might have a lot of ideas but it's hard for them to organize them um so that is it y'all i really hope that this was helpful we talked about our dinners for the week we talked about our fitness routine for the week um And when I say we, I mean I, so I would love to hear, I hope that these ideas help you. You know, maybe you hadn't thought of a chicken pot pie or a turkey stroganoff, you know, or maybe uh, you forgot about HIIT. Maybe you really only run and do yoga and HIIT's amazing. We can do a whole episode on the importance of HIIT, um, high intensity interval training. And yeah, I really hope that this Enneagram business is resonating with you. Um, I'm super passionate about the connection between the two. I think that's when you find the sweet spot, when you're obsessed with one thing and you're obsessed with another thing and you can find that integration it just lights it on fire. So super passionate about it. Um, Thanks for checking in with me on a Sunday. I can't do these during the week because i got a full-time job, which I love, 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 love. So we'll be meeting here on Sundays. Um, Toodaloo. Bye for now. Wee! Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to end this, and then we're going to end that.